Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk about my worksheet and how I use it to value stocks so I can make better decisions. I'm going to show why I'm no longer interested in something like Palantir and Tesla in big as big trades because of my valuation worksheet. That doesn't mean I don't think they will go up. It just isn't attractive as an investment. And I'm also going to show the other companies I'm looking at because they are attractive as an investment. Uh, today, both Baidu and IQ, Ikeyi stock, which is the Netflix of China, and Baidu is the Google of China, <clears throat> they both had earnings. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it didn't go so well for them. They, they both... One beat on earnings and missed on revenue, and it suffered. The other one beat on revenue, missed on earnings, and it suffered. But either way, they were both down significantly. Baidu was over 5 6%. IQ was 10 11 They both started to recover towards the end, which is, which is good. But let's go over my worksheet so you see what I even want to talk about. I'm learning lots of tips and tricks to do on these Google Sheet worksheets. And a new trick that I have learned is I have a bunch of data on all these different companies to give me an idea of what's a good company as a business and what's not. I even have Google, Amazon, Apple, Meta, Microsoft, Tesla, NVIDIA, of course. Well, I have to do some analysis based on analyst earnings expectations and I want to compare all these companies to find out what's worth investing and what's what's worth avoiding <clears throat> so one example is I look I create a a discounting formula to tell me the five-year potential change or I want to find a company that is potentially worth a lot more in five years and that's that's all this this chart basically tells me there's a couple names like Canadian Solar is on there. SMCI recently popped up on the list and IQ is one of them, another one of them. So these are companies that can move big over the next five years. And they get on my radar and then I, I look to see if everything matches up. Then there's these other companies down here that aren't on my radar as great values. You see how that works? I'm not going to buy a Microsoft, even though it's a great business, because I want the most bang for my buck for five years. Well, recently, I was able to do a filter function, and it sorts these every single day. It gives me a new list every single day of what's attractive. And as you can see, IQ is on there. They're not ranked in any any particular order, but a lot of Chinese stocks are on here. Stone in Brazil, Mobley in Israel. Uh, Intel is on there, but I'm not. I'm not. I, you still have to do some digging. I'm not so bullish on Intel, but it's telling me it's a potential bargain. And one of the metrics that I use is potential, potential internal rate of return or Kager. And then I also look at the potential future price divided by the current price. I use something called, it's my own version of intrinsic value, but I discount the potential future price and I also discount the earnings. And that's how I get, you know, my shortcut intrinsic value. It's not a perfect intrinsic value, but it's close. And that's why IQ and Baidu are on my list because it's relatively cheap on an earnings basis. As you can see, I have earnings yield for each, and they're attractive. Uh, earnings yield is PE inverted, so you, you get more of a, a yield or, or interest rate equivalent. And both IQ and Baidu have huge earnings relative to price. If you jump over to Tesla, it has a forward earnings yield for, for 2025 of, of about 1%. So not as juicy as these other Chinese names and other names. They don't have to be Chinese. 
Palantir is less than 1%. The price has risen so much that the the earnings yield is just not as attractive. <clears throat> Remember, Palantir was 7 bucks at one point. So Palantir at 7 bucks was a greater value compared to now Palantir at $61. So the Kager potential is now negative. So these are what that means is you're you're going to lose opportunity if you stay in Palantir in a big position. Um, if you put all your money in Palantir and it went up, do you really want to stay in just one name? Uh, that's that's a personal decision for everyone. But let let's go look at the chart. I have Baidu, and another reason I like Baidu is this yellow line right here. That's the tangible book value every quarter, and as you can see, that's at a hundred when Baidu is trading at eighty one dollars. So. Rarely does Baidu trade under that tangible book value. And when it does, it seems to, to rally above. So that's another reason I like Baidu. But today, it is beaten up. It was down as over 6%. It closed just below, down 6%. So we'll have to see how that trades. IQ, same thing. Down over seven uh, over seven percent for the day was down even worse, but I'm looking for positive action on both of these names, and <clears throat> I've made uh, these bars to represent a fair value based on the earnings. And as you can see, I believe IQ should trade higher. Should be over six dollars for this year, eight dollars for next year, maybe ten dollars a year after that. Let's go back to Baidu. And uh, based on 20 PEs, Baidu could easily be a $200 stock. Next year, a $221 stock. It doesn't grow as fast as IQ, IQ but there's definitely value. They're working on AI. Um, IQ stock also, let me get rid of everything, is also trading below tangible book value. And last time it did that, it went up 50%. So last time it was trading below tangible book value, it bottomed and it went up 68 over 68%. So could it happen again? Uh, I believe so, but that doesn't guarantee anything. As you look, that yellow line is usually below the stock price. So investors seem to agree that that uh, IQ shouldn't trade uh, for very long below tangible book value. The main point of this video is that you should have your own worksheet where you track a bunch of stocks and then generate your own opinion because you're not, you really shouldn't put all your money in one stock. And if you find one really great stock, it makes it easier to compare all your other stocks to that one great stock. So why would I want to buy Tesla at you know 3 339 with an earnings yield of 1? I know it's growing fast, but it recently traded as low as 100 and 140 dollars. I think I'm going to pass on 339 and wait for a better buying opportunity. Let's just look at Tesla real quick. And you'll see why in a second. So here's here's my Tesla chart. I'm going to bring in my ratios. If we look at earnings yield, Tesla has a tendency to trade low and then juicier, higher yield. Think of this upside down uh, as PE or similar to PE. If you look at price to sales, it's traded at 5 and it's traded at 10. It's now at 12. Let's ignore this stuff because that was, well, in hindsight, will have been a bubble. If we look at price to cash flow, it's traded at 25 times cash flow. Right now it's at 82 times cash flow. I think it's normalizing into more of a mature company. And that's why we're going to have these more reasonable valuations. It'll probably stay around as high as 400 bucks for a long time and maybe trade around 200 again. That's my opinion. If I look at Palantir, this has been a huge run. 
it, it's at 151 times cash flow, very expensive. It was 42 at the bottom. Uh, earnings yield is now very light. Where is price to sales? At the bottom, Palantir was trading at seven times sales. It's now at 57 times sales. So next time we see it at below 10 times sales, that would be an interesting time to re uh, reload the account with Palantir. But last time, you know, over 40 and 50 times sales, those are more expensive valuations for growth stock, any growth stock, even a mature stock, of course. But a growth stock, you want to try to get it at multiples of, of sales because that's how you make earnings and get your money back as an investor. This has become a momentum stock. So as long as people keep buying something like Palantir, you know, it's going to keep making money as people pile on. But as soon as people start taking profits, you know, the value investors are the ones that are going to pick up a stock after it's beaten up. And if you want proof of that, look at a super micro computer. That thing went up a lot. What is that? Over 1900%. Then the bears went in, people started taking profit. It went down over 85%. And now the value investors are, are the ones that are jumping in, picking it up. Near book value, I think the PE was below 10. But uh, those are the guys that are going to pick it up after a crash. And that's just a great lesson. Could this happen to a Palantir or a Tesla? I don't know. But just keep an open mind when it comes to valuation. Know what a bargain is. That's why I like these worksheets. These are bargains. And uh, these are these are uh, priced out, I would say. Uh, Bros is an interesting one because it's it's still growing. It just looks very expensive. I probably wouldn't dump Bros, uh, but you have to know and research every stock individually to have that kind of an opinion. I hope you found this useful, and if you did, let me know, and uh, feel free to leave a comment. Cheers.